Okay, hello everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. This is our counseling boot camp. Welcome to Draws and Pearls Counseling Boot Camp. And I'm talking to Gladness, I'm talking to Deborah, I'm talking to Favor, Tsunami, Adizat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And to the many that are also joining. Welcome, 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 welcome. Okay, so I'm going to start right away. How are you doing? Feel free to put your um, your thoughts in the comment section. How are you doing today? How is campus? Have you resumed? How has it been for you so far? Have you settled in into school? Accommodation settled? How are you doing? I would like to see something in the chat just to be sure you are here. How are you doing? Welcome, 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 welcome. So how are you doing today? Welcome, welcome. This is Jewels and Pearls Counseling Bootcamp. Great, I've seen I'm fine from you guys. So welcome, welcome. Okay, so our mission today is to help you prepare for this new session. Um, through different ways. For today, we are going to be talking on academics. Today, we are talking on academics. And I am so glad I have the opportunity to come right into your hostels or home, wherever it is you are watching me from. Thank you so much for being part of this. Mm, let's see, let's see. Okay. I'm going to quickly start sharing my slides. Remember, I said you can ask me questions. Um, you can put questions in the chat or comments, and I'll be glad to take them. Okay, so Draws and First Ladies or Draws and First Counseling is home to um, Draws and First, or Draws and First Ladies is the parent's name, and under Draws and First Ladies, we have Draws and First Counseling, and part of counseling, we do boot camp trainings, which is just to prepare you for the session, prepare you with information, so that you are well aware of what is coming and you are able to, you know, prepare and, you know, do well with what you are giving. So I'm going to start sharing my slides immediately so that we can be ready. Let's get this show started. Can you see my slide, please? Please confirm. Can you see my slide? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to start talking immediately. Again, welcome. Okay. To the three day boot camp with me. You are welcome. I'm going to be um, sharing. But before I go into sharing, I want to talk a little bit about myself so that it doesn't look like who is this woman? For those that have never met me before, my name is Blessing Eloho Owama, also known as Counselor B. Um, they don't just call me Counselor B because I picked a name, but because by the grace of God, I'm actually a counselor by profession. I am a counselor by profession. I'm a Christian counselor. I usually like to put it there so that when I counsel you with research, with the word of God, you won't feel like, why is this woman talking to me about the Bible and things like that? Because I believe Christian counseling is more balanced and the results are more lasting and permanent than just counseling. So I am a Christian counselor and I reach out to young people on matters of academics, identity, sexuality, ETC, many other things, right? And I'm a trained counselor. Although my first degree was in biochemistry, um, many years ago, and but I've gone back to school. I've gone to have a PGD in counseling, that's guidance and counseling, and a master's in counseling. And currently, I'm on my PhD in counseling in the in Leeds City University. Okay, what else? What else? I'm also a I'm also the founder of Just and Pearls Ladies. Just and Pearls Ladies is a platform that started in 2006 when we began to reach out to a lot of young people on campus, talking to them about how to, you know, cope with campus life. Then I was still in school. I was in my third year. I was still in school on campus for my first degree, talking to them about campus life, what campus life is all about, how they can successfully pass through campus, 
started in 2006 until now we are still here impacting lives. What else about me? I mean, I'm an author, youth pastor, businesswoman. I'm also a wife and I'm a mother to three adolescents. I also have experience working as a student affairs officer, counselor and chaplain of Trinity University. Okay, so today is day one. Welcome to day one. Day one, and one of the things um, I like about this post or about this um, today's topic, which is academics, is that your academic journey is a marathon, is not a sprint. Your academic journey, yes, you have started it. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. What's a marathon? It's such that one, usually in a marathon race, you would have people run with a baton and pass to the next person. That one will pass to the next person. That one will pass to the next person. Meaning there's a chain. There's a chain. It's not just one. You don't just run once and say, oh, I've won. I've won. No. There's a chain reaction. So there's what you need to pass to the next, what you need to pass to the next, and all of that. So academics is, you know, it's not something you just run through. No. There are processes to get it done, to do well in academics. So day one, we are talking on academics. Okay, now I'll be talking about three major points on sending academics. As a student, someone who just, who has just gained admission to the university, or maybe you're in your 200 level, 300, perhaps even final year, what should you be looking out for as you start a new semester or a new session? Particularly those that are very young, people that are just coming into university for the first time, what should you be looking out for in your academics? Number one, you should be very particular about what feeds into your school. Because at the end of the day, you came to school to learn. You, you came to school to get a good degree. You didn't just come to school to mark time. So you should be um, you should put your eyes on what feeds into your scores. What makes 100%? But at the end of the day, you are marked over 100. So what makes that 100? You need to know what makes it. Very, very important. Number two, you need to know what GPA is your grade point average, you need to know what it is, what makes it a grade point average, what, um, what are the past grade point averages, what are the ones that signify failure. You need to know all this so that you can position yourself because you will always behave according to what you know. Everybody be behaves and functions to the level of what they know. You cannot function above what, um, above what you know you would always function around what you know. You cannot function above what you know. That's why knowledge is important. If you know more, you will do more. If you know more, you will behave better, right? If you know more, you perform better. So the call is that you know more. Once you give yourself to knowledge, you would always excel. You would always excel. Okay, the third point I want to discuss on the academics today is reading and reading style. Some people feel that ah, this is not a big deal. Everybody reads, every student reads. No, but you need to study yourself. You need to study yourself because the way you read may be different from the way another person reads. And it's important you know how you read so that you can make the best of it. Okay, so we are going to point one. What exactly feeds into your score? What exactly? We have assignments. We have attendance, we have class participation. Now, class participation may not um, be a score, something that fits into your score for every lecturer. For some lecturers, yes, but for some, they may not be moved by what you do in the class. They may just want the class to be orderly, but they may not take points or mark people as the class is ongoing. Um, so it's in between, it's not, it's not a definite for all lecturers. Um, another thing that fits into your score is test. Test. Another thing that fits into your score, if it happens in a course or another, is presentation. It's not every course that will have presentations, but some may have. And the last that we all know, exams. Exams. If you are a student, you came to school, you will definitely write exams. Everybody you will write exams. You can't run away from it. Okay. Now, what feeds into your scores? We want to break it down. We want to break it down. Whether you are a new student or this is your second or third or fourth year or fifth year, this is important for you. Now, attendance. 
I know there is sometimes there's a laziness that comes with, hey, I'm not ready to go to class, or rain fell that night, or oh, everywhere is cold, I want to just relax a little bit. But remember, you came to school. You came to school. So it's important that you, you put your focus on where you are going. Maybe I should even um, mention that before we go any further. Let me ask you, where are you going? Or what do you want to finish with? For every one of you on the call, what do you want to finish with? What do you want to finish um, your first degree with? What's your plan? What do you plan to finish? Let me see it in the chat section. What's your plan? What do you plan to finish with? Okay. What do you plan to finish this degree you're on? What do you plan to finish with? What's your plan? What's your what are you looking forward to? That oh, when I'm done, I'm finishing this my first degree with this grade. What grade is that? Have you made up your mind? What grade do you want to finish with? Let me see your chart. What grade do you want to finish with? Um, maybe before I go, maybe I should fast forward to the different grades, just in case if you don't understand what I'm saying. So if you look at my, on my end, it's my right. Yes, it's my right, lower right. I have know, your, know the class your grade falls into. First class, second class upper, second class lower, third class probation or advice to withdraw. So let me ask you again, please put in the um, chat, what do you want to finish with? What grade are you looking to finish with? Okay, anyone? Anyone? What grade are you planning to finish with? Because that is important. And that will spell out what you need to do to get there. Anyone? What grade do you plan to finish with? Okay, everybody's quiet, why? Please remember to put it in the chat. I'll check it later. Okay, so let's go back to what we are, okay, I have something in the chat. Let me see. Somebody says first class. Wow, I love it. First class, and that's coming from Gladness, Deborah, Favor, Senami, and Adiza. Great. You know the amazing thing? Most people plan to finish with the first class. Most people. Do, do I say, did I say plan? No, most people wish to finish with the first class. But first class is not a wish. First class is not a wish. You can't wish first class on yourself. No, you work out first class. Nothing good comes without somebody doing something about it. Somebody putting in the work. It's practically impossible, right? For the sun to rise this morning, God has set it for it to rise. If not, it will rise, right? So there's always something to do to get there. And first class is a tall order. But the good thing about it is that first class is achievable by all of you on this call. First class is achievable, particularly if you are just entering or you've not gone too far. First class is achievable. First class is achievable. So number one, attendance. So if you are going for first class, if you, are, if you want to finish with first class, your attendance is important. Why? Because it probably takes about 10 marks. In most schools, not all schools, but most schools, it probably takes about 10 marks. So you want to be in class. You, want, you don't want to miss classes. Right. So what fits into your attendance, the time you wake up, the time you get ready, the time you eat, the time you get to class before your lecturer, all this feeds into your attendance. Now, what, do, what does that mean? Your, the time you wake up, it means you will set alarm. It means you tell your roommates to wake you up. If you are coming from home, it means you tell whoever it is with you at home to wake you up. And if that is not possible, you, it means you would wake up to make sure you are there early to make sure you beat the time and you are in class. Attendance is very important. Now, let me now differentiate a first class person from a two one, from a two two and the rest. Somebody that wants to finish with first class will make sure that they would attend all the classes. That's their plan. That whatever happens, unless if I didn't hear about the class, if I heard, I will attend no matter what it takes. So anybody going for first class, your habits, your little habits, you will watch it now. You work on it now. Meaning you will be in all classes, not some, all, not most, all. So your mindset is, I will not miss any class again. 
right? Try it out, finish the two one. You attend most classes. Oh, I will just make sure as much as I can. That's a two one person talking. Throw it a two two. I will attend some. I will, I will try my best to attend some. My best to attend some. Meaning, if they've gone back to the room and they hear that a lecturer has gone to class, they will say, Ah, I've left class. So that's another day. I will pick. I'll, I'll copy it later. That's a, that's a two a two two student. But if a class student will go back, even though the lecturer, even though they've gotten to the hotel and they heard the lecturer went to class, they will run back because they know what they are pursuing. But if a class student, five marks matter, 10 marks matter, because at the end of, end of the day, it feeds into 100 marks, into your 100%. It feeds into it. So for a first class student, every mark would matter. So my question to you is that if you want to finish the first class, what is your plan for attendance? Are you going to attend all the classes this session or this semester? Are you going to attend most? Are you going to attend some? Are you going to people in third class and people in, in probation? They'll be like, anyone I meet, I will attend, right? It's not important to them or it's not so important to them. You make your choice from now. That's why I ask you, what grade do you want to finish from? The second thing that feeds into your score is your assignment, term papers, research, when they tell you to read up, when they give you some group work to do. It is important that you give it all, all you can. It may be 10 marks they will score, it may be 20, maybe 30, but please take your assignment seriously. If you must pass, if you must do well, if you are going for first class, you can't joke with your assignment. I remember when I was doing, when I did my first degree, I finished my first degree with a 3.29. A 3.29 is a 2.2. 3.29 is a 2.2. And I finished with a 3.29. And I felt that I was okay now. I was an average student. I tried. But guess what? There were many assignments I didn't submit. I submitted some. I didn't submit all. Now, fast forward to when I... I moved um, I, I, years after and I went back to school. This time I was even married. I had three children. And my three children were young. My oldest was about seven. So you can imagine, small, small children. And but this time I had a vision to finish with the first class. Now vision defined me. So guess what? All my assignments, not some. Once I hear there's an assignment, whether... I, I was in class or not, because there were times for one reason or another, young mom with young children, evening classes, maybe one or two I missed. But any assignment I heard about, I made sure I wrote my assignment, I submitted. Unless if I didn't hear. If I heard about it, I made sure. Because for a first class student, even five marks matter, two marks matter, one mark matters. If you are going for first class, you can't joke with your marks. Your marks must be important to you, no matter how small it is. But it's a, a two to student, a, a third class, will be like, eh, not just five marks. No, if you want first class, five marks is a big deal. Three marks, two marks is a big deal because you know there's a difference between 69 and 70. Hmm? There's a difference between 69 and 70. I will get to that shortly. Another thing that feeds into your score is tests. And I know there'll be tests that'll be announced, some unannounced, but make sure you are ready. Don't run away from tests. No matter what, whether you are prepared or not, write something. Write something. Because for some lecturers, if you did not write, they've, they've scored you zero. If you did not write your test, they've, they've just scored you, right? So just make sure you write something. And that's why I encourage you to read. We soon come to reading. Read, make sure you are reading your books. You think they didn't send you to school to play. Reading your books. And you know the amazing thing? When you put in the work at this level, it's an investment for your next level. If you put in the work at this level, it's an investment for your next level, your next level of career, of work, of whatever. It's an investment for your next level. So now make sure you're investing in reading. It's for your good at the end of the day. Okay. Another thing that fits into your scores could be presentation, group work, or individual work. Whatever it is, make sure you do it. Give it your best shot. Be a, be a fan of research. Give, give it your best shot. For example, 
when you join YouTube or when you go to YouTube, instead of just watching funny things, things that make you laugh or entertain you, make sure you're also watching videos that maybe on a topic that your lecturer took and you did not, it did not make sense to you. Maybe a topic your lecturer took, you didn't, you didn't understand it. Go on YouTube, search for the topic. That's the amazing thing. A lot of um, information, a lot of teaching is done even on YouTube. So any course you are not understanding right now, Google it or go on YouTube and type in the topic and watch as many videos addressing that topic. You might just find that you understand it better than what your lecturer is saying, or it just opens your mind to more, more examples of what your lecturer was saying, right? So don't let any, don't give yourself any excuse. A first class student, no excuse. You don't give yourself an excuse. A first class student doesn't give excuse. You face it because you know it's an investment for your next level. Okay, class participation, like I said earlier, class participation may not be compulsory for every, for every lecturer. For some lecturers, it's not a big deal, but some lecturers may take your participation in class seriously. Meaning if he's asking questions, he expects you to reply. He expects you to, you know, be part of the class, not somebody, a student that is not sleeping, a student that is not absent-minded. That's what they want. So be just make sure you're participatory, at least to a good extent. So if he asks questions, you should be able to answer. And just in case if you cannot answer, you can turn it into a question back to him. I say, sir, um, I'm trying to understand what you're saying, but do you mean this? You can ask questions so that you can be okay at the end of the class. Participation can be important for some courses, but basically make sure you are aware in class. You're not sleeping in class. Your mind has not traveled to America while you are in another class in another country, right? Okay, the next point, which we all know that physical has caused is our exams. And most of the time, exams is 60%, 60 out of 100. But what some people don't do is that they, they, they put their eyes on the exams and take their eyes off all the others. So they will say, my exam, oh, oh, I'm going to reach for exam. So two nights to the exam, we are reading, we are reading, we are reading. Hey, 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 no, no, no. That's fire brigade approach. That's fire brigade approach. The way it should be is that you must have read very well before exams. So exams should start taking past questions. That's practicing, bringing out. And uh, exams is 60%. Remember what happened to the many 40. So if you focus on the 60, you might miss out on the 40. And 40 is, a, is also a big score. So like I said earlier, please do not joke with your marks. Don't joke with your marks, whether it's attendance, assignments, tests, presentation, class participation, whatever it is, do not joke with your marks. Your marks, no matter how small, no matter how big, don't joke with your marks. Okay, so are you following? Let me see your yes or no. Are you following? Let's see the chat room. Are you following? Is this making sense to you? Let me be sure that you are here. Are you following? Let me see it in the chat section. Is your mind here? Hope you're not distracted. Okay, I can see two yes is great. Okay, so I'll go on since you are following. Okay. Okay, let's go to grade point average. Let's go to grade point average. Now, um, I have a video talking about grade point average and I'll put it in the comment section later. I have a video on YouTube talking about grade point average in detail, how to calculate it, right? But before, um, I'll put it later, I'll put the link later. But for now, let me just discuss as much as I can, but you can watch the video later to explain more. Okay, um, you need to know your course titles, whether this is your first year of school or is your second or third or fourth, you need to know your course codes and your course titles. You need to know, for example, BIY 101 means biology 101. CHM 102 means chemistry 102. BTN 101 means botany 101. CSC 112 means computer science 112. So depending on your course, depending on your, your, um, your the, the number that has been assigned, 
please know your courses and know the titles, know the codes early. Early, don't let it jam you. You know, put your eyes. And while we're talking about this, let me also mention that it's important that you also study your prospectus or student manual, whatever it is, prospectus, because that's where the courses are. Study it so that you can know what course, what course code is equivalent to this course. Very, very important. So when they are talking about it, you are not lost. It's very important you know your course, your course codes. Okay, after knowing your course codes, for example, you know biology 101. You say, oh, we are going for BIY 101. They'd be like, what's BIY 101? They mean biology 101. And it could mean it could mean there could be different codes for different departments, different faculties. Know your codes, know your titles early. Know them early. From the very first, they go and find out. As you are registering the course with your course advisor, as you are writing out the course, ask for the course code. Usually, you don't write the course code at the corner. Make sure you take it. You have a note where you write out all your course codes. Very, very important. Okay? Other information you need to take note of, even as you, as you do your registration, is also your course weight. Your course weight. For example, some courses are one unit courses. Some are two unit courses. Some are three unit courses. Some are four unit courses. Some are five unit courses. Some are six unit courses. You need to know the course weight. And usually, it's usually in your course form. But just in case if it's not there, when you are registering with your course advisor, write it down. Oh, CHM 101 is two units. Write out your units. It's very important for you. Very, very, very important. Okay. Next point, implication of grades. What's the implication of grades? When you say, oh, somebody has um, A, what does it mean? It's important you know the implication of grades. Very, very important. Now, um, we are going to talk about 70 and above. 70 and above is an A. 70 and above is an A. Now, that works in Nigerian climbs, or let's say climbs that are not nursing. I know nursing sometimes, 70 is not a, a. Sometimes it's 90 that is A. Then when you go abroad as well, some curriculum, 70 is not A. It's 90 that is A. So that's another thing you need to know. As you get into school, a school, find out what are the implications of their grades. What score is A? What score is B? What score is C? What score is D? It differs. Don't just take it and say, oh, in Nigeria, A is 70. So wherever I go to, because after you finish, if, if you are in Nigeria now, maybe after you finish, you may go abroad for your second degree. Don't go there and think that 70 is still A. It's not A there. You need to find out because it could be 90 in some places. It could be 80 in some places. You need to find out. So the implication of grades in Nigeria right now, 70 and above is A. 70 and above is A. 60 to 69 is B. 60 to 69 is B. 50 to 59 C. 45 to 49 D. And it differs. That's why it's important you have your prospectus. So if they've not given you prospectus as a new student, go and find out. If you don't have access to prospectus in your school, go and ask in your department. Ask your course advisor. Ask your HOD. Please, sir, what is A? Give me the score. What is B? Give me the score. C, D, E, F. Just find out. Just find out. Knowledge, like I said, is important. If you know more, you will do better. Everybody functions at the level of knowledge they have. If you know more, you will do better, right? So if you want to do better academically, you must know more. You must know more. Very, very important. So find out all that from your course advisor or prospectus. It can be in prospectus, particularly in um, government schools. Prospectus usually carries that, right? But if it's in a private university, ask for it. If you don't have a prospectus, ask for it. If they did not print a prospectus, fine. Go and sit with your course advisor. Find out how many. What is what is um, A? Find out, very important. Next point, know the classes grades fall into. And I'm going to explain the next slide. There are different um, um, grades you can finish with. I finish the first class, like those five ladies said earlier, they want to finish the first class, or they want to finish the first class. It's amazing. Okay, they want to finish the first class. Some want to finish the two, two one, finish the second class upper. Some people want to finish with the second class lower, which is a two, two. But some people 
they didn't plan to, but they may just fall into third class. Uh, some people probation, some for advice to withdraw. Um, from the third class is not is not really encouraging. Third class and below is not is not encouraging. I pray you won't fall there. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about these classes and what qualifies you to be in this class. The first one is first class. All of us in first class say yay. If you are in first, if you are in first class, sir, say yay. That's my class. Yes, after my first degree, that became my class. Okay, so the first class is a class where you have between 4.50 as your GPA and above. When you have 4.50 as your GPA and above, that's the class. Okay, and okay, I will I have more explanation on that on that YouTube link, and I will put it in the chat later. The second class is. 3.40 to, let's say 3.40, sorry, it should be 3.50, 3.50 to 4.49. So second class upper starts from 3.5, 3.5 and, and, and 4.49, second class upper, right? Second, why, um, second class lower, 2.50 to 3.49. Right, and third class from 1.50 to 2.49. Probation 0.50 to 1.49. Advisory withdraw 0.50 and below. Now, um, between um from third class down may vary in some schools, but you need to know that since you don't want to plan for since you're not planning for third class, you have no business with that, right? So begin to plan for at least a two one. A first class is possible, like I said. I want you to know it's possible for you. It's possible for you. But at the most, or if it's so hard, at least a two one. At least a two one. Now, look at the space in between advice to withdraw and probation. The the stage the space is a lot. But look at the space in between. Let me see if I can lower this. In between. Um, the first class is small. Narrow is the way, right? That leads to the kingdom. <laughs> Narrow is the way and broad is the way that leads to hell. Okay, so, yeah. so what I'm just trying to say is that yes, first class is possible, but if you can look at it very closely, it will take a lot to get there. That's why you see squeeze. The, it's between 4.5 and 5.0. That's first class. That's first class, between 4.5 and 5.0. So you must be intentional to enter into that place. Why the place for zero, um, probation stroke advice to withdraw is a lot. There's space enough to accompany or to accommodate anybody that wants to fall there, right? Even though people don't plan for it, or if they are not serious, they may just land there. You will not land there in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so first class, remember, you are intentional. What a first class student thinks differently from a third class student. A first class student thinks differently from a 2-1 student. A 2-1 student thinks differently from a 2-2 student. A 2-2 student thinks differently from a third class student. Of course, a third class student thinks differently from a probational, a student of probation or advice to withdraw. Now, let me share, share with you a quick story. I know some people say, oh, school has come and all that. I agree that going to school will not open all the doors in your life. But I also believe that if you finish with a good grade, you are open to more opportunities than people that finish with a poor grade. Now, that does not mean you finish with the first class, you are getting a job immediately. It may not be automatic. And you may not even get the job of your dreams immediately. But guess what? Finish with a first class or a 2-2-1, two, two, a good score, it gives you more opportunities than someone who finished with a third class or probation and all that. So don't wire your mind and say school has come. There's no need. After all, it's not what you read in university you used to prosper or used to do well in life. Not necessarily. But it's important, whatever you do, do it well. Now, let me give you a short story of my own life. Um, 
my father used to work in NNPC. And for those that know, NNPC is an oil company in Nigeria. And they used to pay very well, very, very well. Now, when we entered university, my father didn't tell us that there was an opportunity. Um, and I'm talking about the us. I'm talking about myself and my two siblings. We were the first three. Later, we had two other ones, but they were many years younger than us. So for the first three of us that got into university about the same time, my father didn't tell us that we had an opportunity waiting for us when we finished in NNPC. He didn't tell us. So I guess he just felt we'll do well. After all, we're not, we're not failing in, in secondary school. So he just probably felt we'll do well. Now, fast forward to when we finished university, um, my elder brother, myself, and my immediate younger sister, remember three of us were in the university at around the same period, we all finished with a tutu. We all finished with a tutu, which is a second class lower. We were somewhere between 2.5 and 3.49. And my brother first finished tutu, my father was angry. But kept he didn't show it so much. My sister finished. I think she brought a result before my same thing. She wasn't so happy. Then my own came. He was hoping I would be the light <laughs> uh, because I started very well. When I, I finished, I started with pre degree, and my pre degree I was going four point zero, four point something. Then something happened. I began to fall sick later during my exams in like year three, and so from four point something I went to two point something. So that made my my um, the, the class I finished with to be two. I finished with 3.29 from biochemistry in the University of Lagos. That's what I finished with. And I brought my results. I told my father my results. That time my father just exploded. It was the the anger he has been feeling for the first two increased. The anger and carried shoulder. I was shoulder part. He was not angry. He now burst out and said, don't you know all of you? You were supposed to finish with at least a two one. If you finish the two one, I would have been able to put you people in NMPC, automatic, automatic jobs in NMPC. You, also, you have to look for jobs. We are like, hmm, you didn't tell us. You didn't tell us. We were thinking, Tutu is not a bad result. After all, some people had third class, some people were on probation, some people did not finish. So Tutu is a good result, but guess what? We were wrong. So three of us finishing with a 2-1, in my father's words, we tied his hands. Because he said, according to him, if we had finished a 2-1, okay, three of us finished a 2-2, two, two, sorry. So my father said, if we had finished a 2-1, all he needed to do was to submit our results the next week. And we will become automatic oil company workers. Woo! At least so it was um, over 10 years ago. So I finished in 2007, got my certificate in 2008. And so guess what? Not finishing with a, at least a 2-1 limited our opportunities. He couldn't help. According to him, his hands were tied. So what am I telling you today? I know people are saying, it's not, it's not a big deal. School is not a big deal. Please, let me beg you. What is worth doing is worth doing well. Do it well. Do it well. Let me beg you on behalf of myself and my two siblings that finished the two two. Do it well. I know you feel that it may not necessarily land you a job, but do it well. There are just many opportunities to open up for you if you do it well. Okay, that's my counsel. Let's go to the next point. Do you have questions? Where are the questions? Any question for me, I'm available. You can put in the chat section and I'll pick it up from there and address you. Any questions for me? Any questions? And like I said earlier, there are more details on my YouTube channel. I have um, a part in my channel that is for academics where I talked about different things um, on academics, including the breakdown of how to calculate your GPA. People do that here today to take a lot of time. For anyone that joins my um, my community, we have access to that. But right now, um, you can just put the questions in the chat and visit my YouTube channel to have the breakdown. I'll put the link in the chat shortly. Let's just finish the um, slides. I'll put the link 
to the academics um, playlist for my channel. My channel's name is Jewels and Pearls Ladies, so you can always go there and check it out. Okay, no questions. Anyway, if you have any question, put in the chat. I'm going to go on so that I don't waste time. Okay, the third point I said I was going to talk about is reading and reading styles. Reading and reading styles. And under this one, I have four points. Number one, when to read. I also have where to read, how to read, what to read. Very, very important. It may seem as if it's not a big deal now. All students read. No, you need to study yourself. You need to study yourself. That's why as a counselor, I've noticed that some people... They are not doing well, not because they are not brilliant. It's because they are not self-aware of their strengths. They are not self-aware of how to bring out the best in themselves. And so they may not just be doing well because of those reasons, not because they are not brilliant. Everybody has brilliance. Everybody. Everybody has brilliance. It's just that a lot of times people are not self-aware. They are not aware of what is in them to be able to bring out that brilliance. Okay? So I'm going to break it down in the next slide. Number one, when to read. You need to identify your peak time as a student. You need to identify when you are at your best, at your best, meaning when you assimilate the most. And for some people, it may vary. For some people, it may vary. It may be that um, for a while, you enjoy reading in the mornings, early in the mornings. Another time, you may not, it may not just, you may not just be assimilating at that hour, right? You probably be in the afternoon for some people in the night, but you need to be self-aware to even know that there's a peak time. There's a time where if I pick my book at that time, I will understand everything very fast. I don't need to read it five times. I don't need to read it four times. I don't need to read it two times. Once I read it once, I've picked it. You need to identify your peak time and use it maximally. It could be night, it could be day, it could be where there is silence. That's why I say you need to be self-aware. It, it could be where everywhere is quiet, that's when you read and read well. It could be maybe when, where water is dropping down, down, down. It probably gives you a sense of peace and quiet. You need to find out. It could be nature, nature sounds, maybe birds chipping. It gives you that, that, you know, feeling of everything is all right. Or it could be in a noisy place. For some people, they just like to read when it is noisy, when roommates are back and they are complaining about what they will eat, complaining about that lecturer, complaining about that boy, about that girl. That's when they can read. Some people can read in noisy places and noisy times, and that's the way they function. So you need to be self-aware which, what time is my peak time. So study yourself, meaning try all the different ones and see which one is your peak time. Okay, um, the next point, I can see a chat, but let me finish this slide and I'll get to it. If you have more questions, put it there. I will come, to, come back to it. Next point on reading is where to read. You need to find out where exactly um, do I go to and I assimilate very fast. Not everybody is a library person. Not everybody, and don't be deceived. There are some people that go to library and they will score lower than you. It's because they've not discovered themselves. Not everybody's a library person. Some people lying down on their beds with roommates being around, they will understand, they will assimilate, they will do well. So not everybody is a library person. Okay, so you need to understand yourself. Identify your peak places. In what place? Where do you stay that you know you understand a lot? Some people are just sitting down on the bench and nature is around. They will understand. I went to Mountaintop University last year and I saw right there in the university, there's a swampy area, grasses everywhere, beautifully cultivated, though not um, grasses that are growing wild, no. Beautifully cultivated. And I said to myself, I said, wow, if I'm in this university, I will so read because this would be my best place to read. We yeah, I'm seeing nature. We yeah, I'm seeing grasses, greenery everywhere. Is there greenery in the library? So if you put me in library, guess what? I won't read much. In fact, most of the times when I went to library with my friends or people I know when I was in um, 
my first degree, I slept. Most of the times so when I go to library, I sleep. Not everybody is a library person. Not everybody. For some people, it's probably in their hostel. Some people just won't let Breeze just be touching me. Anywhere Breeze is coming, they'll just sit in the hostel at the corridor, pick their book, and the thing is entering. So you need to be aware. You need to be self-aware. Discover yourself. Discover yourself. Is it in the room? Is it while sitting down? Is it while lying down? Someone like my husband, all the reading is lying down. Oh, the, I am doing very serious, intense work lying down. So don't 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 put yourself in a box and say people that are brilliant they go to the library is a lie. Is a lie. Finishing with the first class, I don't think my first class. If my first first class, I don't think I read in the library. If I did. Maybe I can count it on one finger or at the most two fingers. I doubt I doubt it. Maybe one finger. I don't think I can even count it in two fingers if I read in the library. My first first class degree. My second first class degree. Did I know where the library was? <laughs> I'm not sure. I've not visited the library in that school. Right? So it differs from person to person. Not everybody's a library person to liberate you. If you're not a library person, that should liberate you. Now discover yourself. Where do I read and get the most out of it? Find out. Is it in your reading room? Is it by a water body? Meaning if you sit and you're overlooking a water body, a stream or whatever, you read better. Maybe the, the way the cool breeze will be blowing by a lagoon, you read better. You need to discover yourself. Okay, this um, third point on reading is how do you read? You read with music. If music, some people, if music is not on, they won't understand what they are reading. You need to find out. Am I a musically, am I someone that reads musically inclined when reading? Am I that kind of person? You need to find out. You like to munch. If there's no chinching around, some people won't understand. If there's no granite, if there's nothing to throw in their mouth while reading, it won't enter. It won't enter. So you need to study yourself. What, what would help me? What do I need to read better? Study yourself. Right for some people, um. Okay, this next um this point was something that God taught me. The Holy Spirit taught me in my first first class degree. Of course, I said then I went back to school after my first degree. This was my second degree, and I had made up my mind. I had a vision in my heart that I was going to finish the first class, even though this time I was married and I had three young children under the age of seven. I made up my mind I was going to finish the first class. So one of the things the Holy Spirit taught me was read your notes into your phone. So guess what? I will carry that course and I'll read the notes into my phone. So while I'm cooking in the kitchen, remember I'm a wife and mother now, I'm listening to my notes. I'm on my way to school. I'm listening to my notes. That made a whole lot of difference. Because I wouldn't have time to sit down and read from cover to cover. It was not possible. And for some of you, if you sit down and read cover to cover, because you are an audio person, you may sleep a lot while reading. But if you plug in your earphones or AirPods, and while you're on your way to class, you are listening to your notes, while you're on your bed folding your clothes or whatever, you are listening to your notes, while you are doing manual chores or regular chores, you are listening to your notes. Guess what? Those things will stick. Ever since I start, started to practice it, it has worked for me. And I'm sure it will work for you too. If the concept is so hard or is a very boring read, read it into your phone. Put the earpods and listen to it and see whether you won't get it. It can help a whole lot. Because not everybody, not everybody is a visual learner. Some are auditory learners, meaning it's what they hear. As they hear, they understand, right? So under study yourself. So one of the things you need to learn is self-awareness. You need to study yourself. What to read? You need to, you can read from cover to cover, particularly as they are teaching you. You can be reading what they are teaching you daily. Very important. I help you to You can read textbooks. I want to encourage you to buy textbooks. I know some of you will say, ah, textbooks are expensive. Try and buy there are different reasons why you should buy, but let me give you one or two. Number one, test books would give you a broader view of the topic. So even if you can't buy physical copy, if there's um, 
e copy by right if they are they are usually books online concerning that topic class for them go and buy or go and search it out and read most of them are free go and search it out and read very important very important so textbooks don't joke with textbooks that was one of another secret i had my first class degree when i was in my uh, first degree i didn't buy most textbooks. i bought some i didn't buy most but when I was in when I was in my second degree that I had my first first class, I bought about every book the lecturer sold. In fact, it was when I had finished, at I, I, I checked my my the books, the books I bought. I think were about 16 or 17 books I bought. And then if you are in a private, not not private, if you're in a public university, for a lot of lecturers, buying their books puts you in their good books. Mm, I know it's not right. It's not right. But do it. If you can afford it, buy it. Don't say, mm, I'll read it somewhere else. Buy it. And sometimes lecturers may hide something in their books that they will bring out that may not be in that other place you want to read from. So if test books are available as much as it lies in you, buy it. Buy and read. Okay, you can begin to read cover to cover, read test books from the beginning of the semester, but when it comes to exam, like I said, I was going to give you, I was, I was going to say something about exam. When it comes to exams, from two weeks to your exam, stop reading cover to cover. It's a secret. Practice bringing out. Don't take in at that point. Once you are two weeks to exam, one week to exam, two days to exam, that's not the time to go back to the beginning of your book and start reading. No, you've missed that time already. Now, you need to practice how to bring out what I read. How do I bring out what I read? And that is by doing past questions. Oh, eh, number what? Number one said this. Okay, now practice. Even if you don't know it, when you ask yourself the past question, you can now go to your notes and check the answer and put supply the answer in your study book, right? So don't start reading cover to cover when it's close to exam. No, no, no. Practice bringing out. You've taken in already. And if you've not taken in before, Going by the way of past question, questions is still your best bet. It's still your, you cover more ground going the way of past questions than going to start again from cover to cover. That is another secret. Okay, I think another thing I want to mention there is that for even if you've gotten to that end of um, close to exams and you don't have past questions, set questions for yourself. Go around your Go from the beginning and set questions so that you can practice writing it out. That means you, you have a, a rough book or study book different from your notes where you have past questions and you deal with each one. The more you practice, the perfect you become. The more perfect you become, the more you practice. So practice makes perfect. Just keep at it, keep at it. Past questions, past questions. Practice bringing out what you've already put in your head. Very, very important. Okay, let me see if I can take that question. Someone is asking, is it possible not to have a peak time? And yes, it's probably possible for people that anytime they read, it enters. But if you're asking, is it possible that at any point in time that this person doesn't understand at any point in time? No, it's not possible. There's always, you would always, there's always a peak time. But for some people, every time is a peak time. For some people, it's a particular time, maybe. 1 a.m. in the middle of the night. That's when they pick. That's when they understand, right? Some people, maybe it's the environment. If everywhere is quiet, oh, they pick. But you need to understand your peak time. Very, very important. Understand your own, your peak time. And if you are the type that your peak time is all the time, fantastic. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep reading. Keep going. Okay? I hope that answers your question. Now, I want to introduce to you my counseling community. My counseling community. Now, this is where I teach you all semester and all session round. Now, what's available in the community, you have daily counsel. I mean, I drop a post every day on the community to help you, to propel you, to motivate you. Because some people, when they enter university, after a while, they're tired, they're like, Let's do and finish and go home. No, that's why I'm here. I'm your counselor. I will push you to make sure you do what you need to do in terms of academics, in terms of peer pressure, in terms of relationship, all of that good stuff. 
we're talking about that. We have daily councils. We have a structure we follow. You know what we post on Mondays, what we post on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, just to help you grow. So I'm inviting you to join my counseling community. What else is available? You also have a 20 minutes free, free book counseling session with me every week. So if you join my community, you can always reach out to me on call, on a call, whether it's a Zoom call, a regular call, whatever it is, WhatsApp call, whatever it is. You have a free 20 minutes to talk to me, to ask questions on any area weekly, but it has to be free booked. We have the Calendly links on the community, so you can always reach out. We also have access, you would have access to question and answers weekly. We have Q and A's every week, so you can ask about anything. No, sh no shame, no shame. You can ask about anything. Or if you ask privately, we can come and talk about talk about it publicly so everybody to learn and nobody may know you're the one that sent the question. What else is available in the community? In the community, we have experts. Guest experts comes twice a month to talk on different issues. So I'm encouraging you, come learn, come become better. Remember, you always function at the level of the knowledge you have. So I'm encouraging you to increase your knowledge, right? Come to the community and increase your knowledge. The community also gives you emotional support. We are here for you. We are here for you on your tough days, on the days when one lecturer bamboozled you or gave you some buzz boost. We are here to help you, to support you, to encourage you so that you don't lose your fire, you don't lose your vision. Okay, what else? The community prompts you to succeed in your educational journey. Whether you're in the university or polytechnic, we are here to support you, to encourage you. You know, we'll prompt you, show you what you need to do to succeed. Guess what? It's just 5,000 naira monthly. It's a monthly subscription that is renewable every month. 5K, Perry, come on. Some of you, your shoe is more than 5K. What am I doing? So, all, right? And many, many more, but that's not my that's not my focus today. I'm just encouraging you, join the community. It's going to help you a whole lot. It's going to help you so that in this journey, you have someone holding your hand and you can finish successfully. We are here for you. 5K renewable month. You can do a monthly plan. You can do a quarterly plan, whatever it is. I'll also drop the link on the chat shortly. Also, we give you support during exams. You may ask what kind of support. Oh, we encourage you for past questions, get past questions. And as we get also, we also share. So you get support. We also pray for you during your exams. Pray for you during your exams. And of course, counseling support. You know, you have someone at your back to help you. Okay, let me see if I can stop sharing so I can put this, put the links on the, on the, on the chat box, okay? Okay, so I'm going to put the link to join the community and I'm also going to put the link to join the, I'm also going to put a link to watch the, the YouTube, the YouTube video explaining how to calculate GPA. I believe this is very important. This is very important for every one of us. This is very, very important. Okay. Let me see. I'm still getting a direct message. <laughs> okay. Let me see. Okay. So I have the link there. So... Yes, so someone is asking, how do you join? Just tap on that link and you will join the group. Just tap on that link and you can join the group. What's the group for is to hand hold you all through the period you are in the community. Basically to hand hold you, emotional support, will also be there to um, teach, um, expose you to opportunities as well, right? We have a lot of opportunities coming up, in fact, there's one that I really don't want any of you to miss. If you can, make sure you're in that community because of the because of the benefits. We also have opportunities. That means when people come to us and they say they want to partner with us, 
um, even globally from um, different parts of the world. We say we can pick people from our community to be part of what they are doing. So I encourage you to also join the community because of that as well. Okay, so the YouTube channel or the YouTube link is on there for academics. So you can always go there and, and you know, learn how to calculate GPA. That is very, very important. Remember to remember to subscribe while you are at it. Remember to subscribe while you are watching those videos. Thank you in advance. Okay, so let me continue sharing. If there are any questions, remember to drop it in the chat. Remember to drop it in the chat. If there are any questions, I will continue sharing my slides. Okay. So back to sharing my slides. So I said this is a paid counseling community, just 5K every month and you get all the support you need. That means you may be in a crisis, for example, and you may not know what to do and probably you don't want to call your parents. This is where you come to. This is where you come to. You can, you can pre-book, um, send, um, um, tap on the link and book a session with me or you can send me a message Whatever it is, we can deal with it and, and advise you and encourage you before you get to the level or escalate to parents. Okay. Let's see. Any questions? Remember to put in the chat. Now, I'm also introducing my book to you. My book, Tips to Succeed in Tertiary Institutions. The hard copy is 1,500 and the soft copy is 1,000 Naira in Okada Books. So you have to go to Okada Books to access it. I'll probably drop the link as well. Um, in my book, I talk about seven areas that affect young people in the university or polytechnic or college of education. Once, once you leave home, there are, certain, there are certain things that will be at play the moment you leave home. And so I discuss a lot of that in my book. I would encourage you to get it as well. Now, before we go, what did you learn today? Let me see it in the chat. What did you learn today? How has it been for you? Write to me. How has it been for you? What have you learned? What are you putting into practice? What's that new thing you learned today? Okay, let me see, let me see, let me see. Put in the chat, let me see. What have you learned today? I'm not going to thank you yet. So no, you need to tell me what you have learned. I need to be sure it's valuable for you. Did it help you? Did it clarify something for you? Did, did you learn something today? Let's see it in the chat. Okay. Did you learn something today? What did you learn? Let's see, let's see, let's see. What did you learn today? Okay, you need to discover yourself. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love that. You learned that you need to discover yourself. Yes. Because the truth is that every one of us, we are different. But sometimes we, we blend and say, hey, it's okay. I may not be like this person, but I'm okay. No, you need to find out who you are because you are uniquely you. Find out who you are. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of your difference. It's because you are different. That's why you are made. God made you because you are different. If you are going to offer the same, God will make you. God doesn't waste space. Every one of you, you are different because you offer something unique. You offer something different. So it's important that you know that you are unique. Okay? And we are going to be doing a lot of that in the boot camp. Sorry, in the community. We're going to be talking about self, how to strengthen yourself, self-esteem, and all of that. We're going to be doing all of that right there in the community. So let me have more responses. What did you learn today? Today we talked on academics. Tomorrow is going to be very interesting as well. Tomorrow we are talking about opposite sex relationships. We are going to be talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, and all of that. Bring all your questions as well for tomorrow. Anything around that area of boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship, bring your questions tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be talking about that because that it's also another factor that plays out in the university. You can't be oblivious to it. You must know and you must be prepared. Okay, just before we go, what else? What have you learned today? Let me stop sharing. 
What have you learned today? I want to know. Okay, someone says that my dream CGPA is obtainable. I just need to put in the work. Yes, I agree. Your dream C um, CGPA is, uh, is obtainable. Only the work you need to put in is obtainable. Don't you dare look down on yourself. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Don't look down on yourself. You can do it. Someone says, I should participate. She learned that she should participate in all the assignments, classwork, and the rest. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. A first class student doesn't undermine assignments, doesn't undermine a five marks assignment. No, five marks is important. Let me go back to my slide and show you something. Five marks is important. You cannot afford to, jo to joke with a five marks. Five marks is important. Okay. Okay, let me go back. Let me see if I can find it. It's somewhere behind. Somewhere behind. Okay, so, no, this is not it. Yes. Did you can you see these marks here? If we say 70 and above is an A, if you get 69, what do you need? One mark. So can you imagine if that test gave you an extra one mark? If you put in more work in that test and you had an extra one mark, it would have changed your level from B to A. That's why a first class student doesn't joke with one mark, two marks, three marks, four marks, five marks. But a third class student say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, it matters because it determines where you fall. Maybe your exam you had, let's say in your test and all of that, you had maybe 29 over 40, right? And in your exam, let's say you had 40 marks. 40 plus 29 is 69. That's a B. So imagine if you put in more effort in your test, in your assignments, coming to class for attendance, and you had, instead of 29 over 40, all of that maybe gave you, let's say, 31. 31 plus that 40 is 71. That's an A. Just maybe an extra two marks. So don't you dare joke with two marks. Don't you dare joke with three marks. They mean something. It can, it can make the difference between a first class and a second class. Someone that had 69 and someone that had 70, what's the difference? One. Someone that had 49, a D, and someone that had 50, the difference is what? A C. Now another, um, another, um, 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 I will tell you here, another secret here is that if you want to finish with a, a 3.0, and I have all that explained in that video, my YouTube channel, if you check it out, a 3.0 is getting seen all your courses. That's another very quick way to hack how you can think about these grades. So think about all your courses this semester. If you get seen all of them, you have a 3.0. If you go to my YouTube channel, that link I put there, you find it there. When I calculated it, I showed you how to calculate it. Or if you have a B in all your courses, that's a 4.0. Or if you have an A in all your courses, that is a 5.0. As simple as ABC. So you determine where you want to be. So if you are, if your results just came out and you see four A, let's say in six courses, you say you see four A, two B. You already know all A's is five points, all B's is four point zero. So if I have four A's and two B's, that means I'm between a four point zero and a five point zero. Same thing if you have all B's, maybe two C's. You already know all B's is five point zero. So if I have two C's, that means I should be between a three points and a four points. That's how to hack it. So once you know that, 
you know that you're already, you need to put in the work to give you what you're looking for. You need to put in the work. It won't, it won't jump on you. Uh, there's no, there's no, there's no magic in academics. Put in the work. Unless if there's a wicked lecturer that likes to fail people and things like that. And that person, you can handle that person in prayer. You can handle that person by talking about it, telling your counselor so they can fight for you. There are many ways to handle them. But really, for you, your own part, put in the work and you'll be fine. Okay? Okay, has today been valuable? Let me see it in the chat. Let me see it. Write it in the chat. If you have questions, has today been valuable? If you are not comfortable saying it publicly, send me a private message right here on Zoom. I'll be able to pick it up. <clears throat> I'll be able to pick it up as well. Um, what did you learn today? If you want to take it for that, my book will be good, as well as the YouTube channel. You can go and check out the academics. I would also put I will put I'll post the Okada book link now. Uh, what else? So thank you all for listening. I can see things are in the chat. Let me go and check. Remember to follow us on Joss and Pearls Ladies on all platforms. Let me see. Someone says yes, ma. Very well. Thank you so much, ma. I really appreciate this. Great, 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 great. So invite your friends, right? Invite your friends. Invite your friends. Tomorrow we continue again, but tomorrow is on relationship because we believe that this is a huge, huge, huge part of, you know, is a huge part of young people's lives. Relationship is a huge, huge, huge part. And we don't want to pretend that it's not there. We don't want to pretend that it's not there. No, it affects a young person's life a whole lot a whole lot. It can make the difference, right, in people's lives. And we don't want to pretend that it's not there. Okay, I just want to drop the Okada link and we are good to go. Let me see. I'm going to drop it shortly and then we can go. But in the meantime, if you have questions, please mention. If you have questions, something you're not clear about, I'm here. I can quickly take them. Any questions for me? Remember to tell your friends about this. Let them be here tomorrow. Let them be part of it so that they can learn more. They can be aware. You always, everybody operates at the level of knowledge they have. Nobody can operate above the knowledge they have. Everybody. The function of what they know is the function of what they, of how they behave. Their behavior shows you that that's what they know. You cannot operate above what you know. You would always operate within your knowledge base. So I invite you to know more. Join the community. Encourage your friends to join in as well. Know more. When you know more, you will do better. And of course, it also translates to a better life as well translates to a better life. Okay, I think I've seen that link. I'm going to post it now. Okay, so this is the link for the Okada books. You can go over there and order yours. Okay, have we been, have we learned today? Are you better for it? Are you better? For, I hope I didn't miss any comments. Are you better for it? No more questions? Are you sure? Are you sure there's no more questions? Okay, so I encourage you for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm talking about opposite sex relationships. Go and pack all your questions. I'm ready. I'm ready. Go and pack all your questions and God is ready for us. Right? God will give us the wisdom to answer. Go and pack all your questions on relationship and come. No matter how, um, how, how complicated the question is, go and bring it. God will give us the wisdom to answer, right? So tomorrow we are going to talk about relationships. Remember to join the community if you can. 5,000 every month. Use that link and, and purchase your subscription. Okay, thank you everyone. With that, we are going to close today. Thank you for being a part of this. I'll see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. Make sure you are here, 7 p.m.
don't come in late because I'll start on the dot of seven because I don't want to waste your time. Okay, so see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. God bless you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you.